Hello, welcome to another video. So in this one, we are going to try to find the largest possible rectangle you can insert or inscribe in a circle of radius four. Actually, the diameter is eight, the radius is four. We know the formula of the area of a rectangle is the length multiplied by the width. And we're gonna be borrowing Pythagoras rule, which is the square of the legs is the sum of the squares of the legs will be equal to the um, the square of the longest side which is the hypotenuse okay now just to help you out if this was a multiple choice quest, um, question and you're asked to find the dimensions of the rectangle that will be the largest if you inscribe it in a circle just go to the option that gives you a square it's always a square so this is called optimization so the best way to use any space is to make it a square. Not the best way, maybe the largest space you can get is the square shape, okay? So square shape houses actually do better than rectangular houses in terms of spacing provided, okay? So now you learned something, but we're not sure we're gonna get a square. I know because I know what optimization is for quadrilaterals, okay? If they have the same perimeter around them, reshape it into the, sh into the shape of a square and you have more space inside. Okay, better than a rectangle or a rhombus or a kite or whatever other quadrilateral that you can create from that. Okay, how can we show uh, what this is? Remember, the question did not say it's a square. If the question says what's the largest square, I, would just, I wouldn't even need to use optimization. Okay, I would just make a square, use some uh, pre-calculus techniques of getting a parabolic function and looking for the vertex. Okay, or solving a simultaneous equation, um, uh, simultaneous equations leading to quadratic equations and factoring or using the quadratic formula. But you can't do that here because they didn't tell you what the vertical is or the horizontal is. They didn't even tell you what it is. So let's do that. Talking too much. Let's do it. So. Let's inscribe the square so you know what we're talking about. I mean the rectangle. So this is going to be like this. Good. That's perfect. So that's the rectangle. And you see? And that. Let's, let's do half of it first because it makes it easy for us to use the radius. So if I draw a line from here to touch this corner, that's the radius of this circle and it's gonna be four. Now this length from here to here, we don't know, but let's just call it X. I'm choosing X because it's on the horizontal, which corresponds with the X axis. And this side, let's call it Y because it's on the vertical. So one thing we know, if we borrow Pythagoras' rule, is that um, 4 squared will be equal to x squared plus y squared. That's certain. We know that. Okay? Let me make this like this. So makes it makes more sense. Okay. Um, so what's the area of a rectangle? It's the length of the rectangle times the width of the rectangle. What's the length of the rectangle? It's from here to here, which is twice x. You can see, if you double it, that will be this. So we have the area, okay, will be equal to 2x multiplied by this. That's going to be 2y. Hmm. So our a is going to be 4xy. So now we have two equations we can use to solve this problem. It's getting nicer and nicer. Okay. So, because we want just one equation, um, this is A and this is what we want to find, why don't we try to write Y in terms of X from this equation? So from this equation, you can see that Y squared will be 4 squared minus X squared, which is 16 minus X squared. Let's do that first. Let me put a separation. Let's separate the sheep from the wolves. <laughs> I like that. Okay, so I'm going to write this, but... 
y squared is 16 minus x squared. So we have y squared equals 16 minus x squared, which means y will be equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared. Ah, oh, square root has shown up. Now, when some people see square root signs, they just freak out. Please don't take the square root of 16 and make this 4. It's not going to work. Okay, so you just let it be like that. Okay, so why is this? I'm going to take this. Why is this? That's not a question. I'm saying y equals this. Okay, so let's take square root of 16 minus x squared and plug it in here. So we have a will be equal to 4x multiplied by y, which is now the square root of 16 minus x squared. That's where we are. Can we push this in? You know, we actually can. That's really weird. I just noticed that I can push this in by squaring both of them. That gives me 16x squared and use it to multiply these two numbers. And we don't need to do um, multiplication by. I don't want to push it in. I'm just going to let it be. Okay, so let's let this be and that's it. So where are we going with this? You can't solve this because you don't know what A is. However, the optimization principle that we're talking about says that at the maximum or the minimum of a function, okay, the derivative is always equal to zero. If there is a maximum, a local maximum, or a local minimum, an absolute maximum, or an absolute minimum, you always have the, the derivative, the rate of change at that point to be equal to zero. So if you have a graph that goes like this, you see all these points? Those are maximums and minimums. Not the, this is the absolute for now. This is the, let me put it this way. So for now, this is a temporary or a local maximum. In this area, it is the maximum, but it's not the overall maximum. The overall maximum over this um, interval is this one. What's the overall minimum? It's the lowest point, absolutely, and that would be this one. So this is what you call the absolute minimum. This is what you call the absolute maximum. This is a local minimum, a local maximum. This is a local minimum, actually, also, because that's the end. Let's say we, we stop here. This is a local minimum, local maximum. This is an, it is both a local minimum and the absolute minimum. This is a local maximum. Okay, so that's what's going on here. So, but what we're saying is that the largest ever will be this one. And at that point, you can see the slope is a horizontal line, which gives a slope of zero. And that's what we're counting on to do this. Now let's do it. Okay, so at this point, what we have to do is just differentiate this, okay? So we're going to say that when we differentiate dA dx, okay, if we differentiate dA dx, it's going to be this differentiated using to be the ddx of 4x square root of 16 minus x squared. That's what we're going to get. So we're going to differentiate this. And because this is one function multiplying another function, we have to bring in the product rule. So we say dA dx will be equal to, if we use the product rule for this, remember the product rule says keep the first, differentiate the second, plus differentiate the first, keep the second. Let's apply that here. Keep the first, differentiate the second. Keep the first, 4x, multiplied by differentiating the second. Now let's differentiate this. We have to use the chain rule. A composite rule, okay? Um, let's use it. So I'm not going to write this out, okay? Because we should know how to differentiate. So I'm just going to write 16 minus x squared to the one half, okay? If you differentiate this, I'm differentiating this part now. What I'm going what I'm going to do is treat this as if it's one thing and bring this down. It's going to be one half 16 minus x squared. Then you subtract 1 from this, minus 1 over 2. Multiplied by, you have to go inside to differentiate. 
If you differentiate this, you're going to get negative 2x. Now, if you don't understand this, it means you're not supposed to be doing optimization. Go get your pre-calculus and your calculus cleaned up, okay? At least your differentiation. So at this point, I have this two canceling this two. I could have done all of this in one line, but I want to show you what I'm doing. So what you have left is this to the negative one half, which is the same thing as one over the square root of 16 minus x squared. That's the meaning of just this expression, okay? Multiplied by negative x, so that negative x sits on top here like this. So I'm going to transfer this and write it here. This is negative x over, when you do this frequently, you're going to get used to it, okay? The square root of 16 minus x squared. That's the first part of this beauty. Okay, so the second part of it is we add, remember the rule, you keep the first, differentiate the second, then plus. You differentiate the first, keep the second. If I differentiate 4x, what do I get? 4 multiplied by, what's the second? No, yeah, 4. If I, if I keep the second, it's just square root of 16 minus x squared. Huh. Let's do some simplification. Huh. So, because I have um, a fraction here, I'm just going to multiply this by this, multiply this by this too, okay? So, what I'm going to do next is going to be, if I multiply this expression by this fraction, I'll be left with negative 4x squared plus if I multiply this by this expression, I'm going to be left with 4 multiplied by, because the square root signs will disappear now, and once that happens, I'm going to have 16 minus x squared over the square root of 16 minus x squared. So I just took the least common multiple, and I took that together. Come on. Let's do it together. Okay, so, and this is going to be equal to um, negative 4x squared plus 4 times 16 is 64 minus 4x squared and all of that over the square root of 16 minus x squared. One more step and that step is this. This is equal to this and this will become 64 minus 8 x squared. I was wishing they would cancel out. They didn't cancel out. Don't get tempted. When it looks promising, don't say yes. Yeah, that's the ticket. Don't do it. Follow the math. You'll be always right. Okay? And divide it by square root of 16 minus x squared. That's dA dx. Now remember what I told you before we started all this beautiful effusion of mathematical gyration. I'm just going to say that. That's, don't listen to me. Okay. Now look at this. I did say that when you take dA dx, at the maximum point, it is equal to zero because there's a horizontal line on the graph of it which tells you that the rate of change is zero. Now this is the rate of change. That's dA dx. Not rate of change, but the derivative, okay? The rate of change of A with respect to x, and that's going to be zero when a fraction is equal to zero, it's only the numerator that's zero. The denominator is not zero and cannot be zero. Okay? If it's zero, then we're talking about infinity, which is an idea, not a number. So we can't get an answer. So when you equate a fraction to zero, you're just saying the top is equal to zero. So it means 64 minus 8x squared equals zero. If you solve for x squared, you're going to be getting 64 over 8, which is equal to 8, which tells you that x is the square root of 8. I could have told you this from the beginning. Come on. Okay, but let's just go on. We've just gotten x. What is y? Boom. That's y, okay? So y 
is 16 minus x squared. What is x squared? It's 8. So y is equal to the square root of 16 minus x squared, which is square root of 16 minus 8. Because when you square this, you're still going to go back to 8, which is square root of 8. No way. No way. x is square root of 8. y is square root of 8. It's a square. Remember what I said? So now we've proved by optimization that the largest um, quadrilateral, the, large, the largest um, rectangle you can inscribe in a circle will always be a square. So what's the question itself? What is the largest, what is the area of the largest rectangle? Let's find our area. before x y now do me this favor give this video a like give it a share give it a comment subscribe why wouldn't you just do that and don't stop learning because those who stop learning have stopped living see you in the next video